Hello student! Welcome to this lesson on the semicolon. You will learn about the uses of this particular punctuation mark so that you can use it in your writing. Have you seen a semicolon before? You have probably seen this punctuation mark in the books and magazines you read. It consists of a full stop and a comma, one on top of the other. This is what the semicolon looks like. The most common use of the semicolon is to connect ideas that are already very similar. I am very hungry. I am going to have dinner. The semicolon here serves to join these two related ideas. The two ideas that are related here are being very hungry and having dinner. So, when do we specifically use the semicolon? Firstly, we use the semicolon between two independent clauses. These two clauses are not already connected with a connective or a linking word. Now, do you remember what an independent clause is? And what about connectives? Do you still remember some examples of connectives? Let's have a quick look. Yes, an independent clause is a group of words that contains a verb and a subject, and that expresses a complete thought. An independent clause is a sentence. As for connectives, they connect ideas or parts of sentences together. Some common examples of connectives are and, but, as, also, thus. Now, Let's see when we use the semicolon. See this example. The first sentence, Martha has gone to the market, is related to the second sentence, Andrew has gone to play football. Both sentences are about where Martha and Andrew have gone. And so, both ideas are similar. We have used a full stop here. We could also have used the connective and. Martha has gone to the market and Andrew has gone to play football. Instead of a full stop or a connective, we use the semicolon to put these two similar ideas in a position, that is, next to each other. So we use the semicolon when we have two independent clauses that are not already linked with a connective. Let us now look at a second use of the semicolon. We also use the semicolon when the second sentence restates the idea found in the first sentence. Let's look at these sentences. The first sentence explains why there is a lot of traffic. The fact that there are construction works on the roads. The second sentence explains how the presence of road construction vehicles, rollers and graders, is causing major traffic jam. In this case, we link the two sentences with a semicolon. The construction of roads is causing a lot of traffic jams. The roads are crammed with rollers and graders. So note that the second sentence restates the idea found in the first sentence. Let's move on to a third use of the semicolon. 
Yes, we can also use a semicolon when the second sentence begins with a connective word or phrase. First, a few examples of connective words or phrases. However, moreover, furthermore, indeed, nonetheless, otherwise, in fact. Now, let us see how to use the semicolon when there is a connective in the second sentence. These two sentences are separated with a full stop. Kate worked hard on all her assignments. However, she was unable to finish all of them. Again, you will note that the ideas in the two sentences are related. They talk about Kate's assignments. Instead of having a full stop, we could have used a semicolon. Kate worked hard on all her assignments. However, she was unable to finish all of them. The semicolon is here used just before the connective however, to join the first sentence with the second sentence. The semicolon replaces a full stop. The semicolon makes the two sentences become one. Now let's go to a fourth use of the semicolon. At times, sentences already contain several commas. In these sentences, we use the semicolon to group similar ideas together and separate them from those that are different. An example. The sentence already contains commas that separate major cities from countries but we still need to differentiate among the different countries. So, we position the semicolon after each country. The players of the game come from Paris, France, Lahore, Pakistan, Sydney, Australia, Delhi, India. Now, we can clearly see that the commas differentiate the cities from the countries while the semicolon clearly differentiates each country from the other. For example, we easily understand that Lahore is associated to Pakistan. It means Lahore is in Pakistan. Lahore, Pakistan is therefore considered as one location. However, the semicolon after France, for example, indicates we are switching to another location, that is Lahore in Pakistan. So, in this case, the semicolon is used to separate locations, France from Pakistan, Pakistan from Australia, and Australia from India. Here are two things to remember about the semicolon. We do not use a capital letter after a semicolon. A semicolon is followed by a capital letter only if the word is a proper noun. Look at these two examples. We can go to the museum now. She is waiting for us there. We can go to the museum now. Jane is waiting for us there. Observe that in sentence A, she is written without capitalization. And in sentence B, Jane is written with capitalization as it is a proper noun. Next point to remember. The group of words before and after the semicolon should form a complete sentence. 
We can go to the museum now. Jane is waiting for us there. Both groups of words on each side is a complete sentence. That is an independent clause. Let us recap when to use the semicolon. We use the semicolon when two independent clauses are not connected with a connective or linking word. We also use the semicolon when the second sentence restates the idea in the first sentence. The third use of the semicolon is when the second sentence begins with a connective. And the fourth use is to group similar ideas together and separate them from those that are different. Let us now practice using semicolons. Where will you place the semicolon in the following sentences and why? Where will you place the semicolon in this sentence? Yes, that's right. Let's identify the two independent clauses in this example. The first independent clause is the rising costs of medicines and medical equipment are large factors in making health insurance more expensive. The second independent clause is employers cannot afford those costs and they have to pass them on to employees. The idea in the first sentence, the reason why health insurance is expensive, is connected to the idea in the second one, employers not being able to afford health insurance. We could have used a full stop between the two sentences, but the ideas in the two clauses are similar that is, both are about health insurance, so we use a semicolon to link them. Another try. That's right! The semicolon has connected the two sentences. Both sentences are about the hurricane, how it was actually less intense and damaging. We have replaced the full stop with a semicolon. The semicolon is positioned just before the connective indeed. So we use the semicolon when the second sentence begins with the connective. One last try. I will travel with Larry, a doctor, Matt, an accountant, and Joe, a banker. This sentence already contains commas. The commas separate the names of people from the job that each one of them does. That is, Larry is a doctor, Matt is an accountant, and Joe is a banker. The semicolon is used to separate each person and their job from the other and to avoid confusion. I will travel with Larry, a doctor, Matt, an accountant, and Joe, a banker. Would you like some more practice? Go to your grade 9 textbook, Unit 5, page 123, and try activity 5A. If you want to see this video again, please note that it is available on the SSP website. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.